<laughs> good, good evening. We'll, we'll get going tonight. This is Tuesday, February 21st, and our first item is a public hearing on McGinty. Can we open Ten, What's that? I'm opening it. The public hearing. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> It's a nice color. <laughs> so, so our first item is, a, is a public hearing for McGinty, 10 Frog Rock Road, uh, application for a site development plan approval to legalize an accessory apartment and expand the footprint of the garage. Is there a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman. Members of the board, my name is Alan Filch, ALP Engineering. Um, I don't know whether or not we can include something up there. I guess maybe not, right? And then I'll just second. Read. That's fine. Unless you have a drawing. I do have one. Harry, may be able to help us with I, that. I can if you like. Up to you. Yeah. No, I'm saying we can do a flash drive up there. Okay, good. Would you like to do that? Or? Sure. Carrie? Yes. Can you grab a flash drive for us? Thank you. You'll see if there's a mechanism. Okay. We get Aggies, Sabrina. I hope that's your G-rated thumb drive. <laughs> I'll get this one for a G-rated. Definitely G-rated. Wait, not be by the time we're done. Is there a file in particular that you're looking for? Or? Uh, just, um, uh, there's a, it's a, I will say civil site plans, or site civil plans. If you want to just put up like C-101, C I think it'd be good. We used to have a computer here, but it's apparently missing. It used to be easier when I could just have Sabrina do it, like Rainy. Now we say, please help me. I don't want to. <laughs> we can use this. Day. Yeah, we can use this. Not the board. We can use the board and get it closer to you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah we can Good evening. My name is Teo Sequenza. I am the architect. Okay. Uh, Representing uh, uh, McGinty here. Right? And uh, I'm There's going to be his assistant now. So. Oh, you should put it up. Yes, I should put it up. Uh, the next sheet, that'd be helpful. Yes, please. That's perfect. Thank That's you. At least it's seen. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm here just to sort of introduce the project. Uh, the, the property is located on the east side of Frog Rock Road. It's um, 1.828 acres in size, and it's accessed through a driveway, which you can see in the lower portion of the property. I'll tell you one of these, which I can point. I don't know whether it shows up or not. No, it doesn't. We use ours. I think ours does. And we, yeah. It's okay. Use one of ours. Really? It's supposed to be special. Don't get hurt. I'm, I'm, I'll prime it. They'll give it back. Bob right. has to pay for it. Exactly. <laughs> the one with the computer is missing. <laughs> As you can see, the house actually has a, there's a single family house here, a detached garage, which is actually connected with a breezeway between the house and the garage. There's also a pool in this location, a pool house, and a tennis court. All on this property. There are several walkways and things like that, and patios and places like that as well. Um, property, there's residential properties to the north on the west side of Frog Rock Road, to the south, and Wicker Wolf Club is to the east. Uh, so the project involves legalizing an existing accessory apartment, which is above the existing frame garage located here. It's also proposed to construct an addition, which is shaded in here to the uh, garage building. Uh, the construction will provide uh, additional parking space. There are two parking spaces in the garage, and provide a third parking space as well, and new living space, um, uh, you know, for the um, uh, for the upper level, the, you know, the second story, if you will, of the garage. Um, to expand, saying, to expand the proposed uh, yes, apartment, not, correct. not a separate apartment. No, no, okay. to, it expands okay. the existing apartment. Sorry. Should be looking at you instead of <clears throat> this way. Um, and I'll just say, with regard to um, the um, uh, the wastewater from the house, just so you uh, just to make the point, we also have obtained no objection um, 
stamp on the architectural plans which Teo Seguenza has prepared. I'll just point that out. And the septic system includes, um, you know, some leaching fields. There's some uh, seepage pits here. There's a separate uh, leaching system actually for the um, uh, for the pool house. And all of these were located by Cassis Construction. They, I'll call it the surgical approach, which is actually going in and physically videoing it and identifying it that way. And I'll just point out finally um, that we also analyzed building and lot coverage. And the, uh, the coverage calculations worksheet show that building coverage um, is 4,928 square feet, which is less than the 5,514 square feet that would be permitted. The total development coverage um, we're actually removing some walkways from here. Uh, there's a walkway there which is going to be removed, and that's like a patio, and a walkway on the south on the south side of the pool house, which is there, which is also going to be removed. Uh, we also, just so you know, we're also planning on removing this uh, patio, which was constructed mostly on the Whipperwell Club site. We're actually going to remove that too, plus the walkway that leads to it. I'm just pointing that out. But excuse me, you're gonna you're gonna move it back onto the. No, property. we're just gonna physically remove it. Remove it. Remove it. Re remove it and restore Thank it. You. That, that was our plan. Uh, but the total development coverage is presently 18,466 square feet, and the future would be 17,298 square feet. Both of which, by the way, are more than the 12,350 square feet which would be permitted. Um, as I say, development coverage would be reduced by, I guess that's uh, 792 square feet through the removals of some of those pathways that are there. And um, that, um, that's essentially what we had presented to the, uh, for this application. I'll let Michael, if you want to just uh, fill in some of the yeah. rest of them. Good evening, Michael Serignano. Um, our clients purchased the property in 2021 and uh, they've made no site changes since during their ownership. All of this uh, site coverage and impervious surface occurred during many, many years, perhaps 50 or more through several prior owners. So it's a conditions, existing conditions that were inherited by my clients. Uh, when we were in was front the of apartment the, inherited? Uh, yes, that from was there. The, the apartment was there when we purchased. Um, and then the other factor was when we were in front of the zoning board just a year ago, March of 2022, um, we wanted to address and did address the concerns, some privacy concerns of our neighbors to the south. And Teo eliminated some south facing windows on the garage, raised the transom of, uh, of the upper window, uh, and, uh, and, and we agreed to some uh, trellis for the, uh, for the rear. Uh, little porch area. Sorry, I'm, and, sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt, but just could you, um, why were you before the zoning board? Uh, we were there for, uh, for variances. For variances for, for the existing conditions that were discovered? Or variances yeah, for correct, this proposal? correct, area variances, yeah. For, I'm sorry, for the existing conditions that were there upon purchase or for, the, for these? No, no, for the development Condition, development coverage conditions then and as proposed. We, as we, yes, correct. Okay. I just wondered if there's a previous right. under another application. No, no. Thank you. And, and, uh, and <clears throat> our neighbors to the south uh, appreciated our efforts and, and indicated that to the zoning board, that they're now satisfied with their privacy concerns having been addressed. Okay. Happy to answer any questions. Great. Yeah. Sabrina, do you want to run through your uh, memo? Sure, I'd be happy to run through the memo. Um, the, uh, you know, as, as Alan had indicated, the coverage is very much over. Um, there seems to be some inconsistency between the coverage calculations worksheet submitted and what is detailed on the plans. Um, there's some different calculations and it's, you know, it would be helpful, Alan, if you could kind of um, take care of that and make them, you know, look at the plans and maybe color code the plans and, and specifically <coughs> identify what is to be removed. Um, the applicant is removing um, some of their impervious surface, but, uh, you know, the 10,000, I had 10,573 square feet of variance 
um, for development coverage, which is a lot. Um, so anything that we can do to reduce that variance, I think would be helpful. The action itself under the State Environmental Quality Review Act is a type two action. Um, for the planning board's information, the existing apartment is 454 square feet and it's going to be expanded to 890 square feet, which is still compliant with the, with the town code. Um, the existing footprint of the garage is also being expanded to ac help co accommodate the parking requirements for the accessory apartment and the main house. Um, and then a question, um, one of the things that is important to identify is where the neighboring houses sit in relation to the property line. I don't know if you have that information or you can detail kind of the edge of their houses on the plan. Um, and I know um, the, there's uh, the neighbor's attorney has his hand up online. Um, and I am aware that of the discussions in the agreement regarding the windows on the side, but it may be helpful to submit elevations or some indication that that is being addressed. Um, and that's all I had for this application, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I think one of the uh, issues, just to clarify also, Alan, is uh, when you were calculating the uh, development coverage, did that include or did it not include uh, the off-site uh, uh, structures or walls and, and the patio? Um, it did not include that okay. um, because it is off the property, right. as I said. For example, that patio and the stair, we're actually planning on removing it now mm -hmm. anyway, so, but it did not. I mean, it just included the site itself right. because okay. it's related more to that. Makes sense. Okay, okay. good. Well, I'm not sure I understand. The part of the patio, uh, I would say 2%, is on the property. That, that was included that in the calculation. Included. Yes, it was. As was the walkway to that patio, but the portion that was off the property was not included. Got it. Okay. Dennis, you had some comments? Uh, not on this application. No, there were no wetlands, no trees, a lot of rock outcropping. Um, so uh, didn't have much to say. Okay. Very good. Sorry. Uh, Bob, you had some comments? Uh, yes, sir. Good evening, uh, Chairman and Planning Board members. Um, Number one, uh, my list is basically I reviewed the Worcester County GIS. I reviewed the surveys, uh, municipal tax parcel. You can go all the way back to 1947 on these things. Based on my review of these things, <clears throat> there were several areas of new imperviousness, which was installed after the effect of the new drainage regulations that came in in 2007. One being the uh, driveway was changed from gravel to asphalt, which is a different curve number. No doubt more than a thousand square feet is gonna require storm water. Uh, there seems to be a new patio in along the pool, including flagstone walkways leading from the pool to the residence. Uh, also a construction of a new patio located on the east of the house. Uh, that was never shown on the original drawings and came in after effect of the storm water regulations. So all that has to be taken into account uh, the areas have to be de clearly defined, and stormwater improvements would have to bring this up to code based on Chapter 108A. Um, D, I'll let Jen chime in on this. Obviously, there was new construction and patio, new walls on the Whippoorwill portion of the property, but uh, I believe there's not much I can say or do with it about that. I'll defer to Jen on that. Um, so make a long story short, A, B, and C definitely has to be included <clears throat> with the new stormwater report up to uh, code for Chapter 108A. Uh, number two, there seems to be two septic systems here. I know the county signed off on the no objection. I'm not quite sure what it was. I can't see what they're signing off on to as a no objection, but I would recommend that they show both systems for the pool house and the residence as approved by the county, just so we know they're both legit. Uh, number three, <clears throat> I would demarcate and label the total limits of disturbance. I'm not quite sure. It's not shown on these plans what's going to be disturbed and how much is going to be disturbed. Uh, this is in the east of Hudson. If you're more than 5,000, you're going to need to SWIP with Chapter 108A as well. <clears throat> and also, too, uh, I would recommend showing the location, size, and type of the existing water service lines for both the accessory apartment 
N, the five bedroom residence. And number five, I would indicate the size type and existing water main located and along Frog Rock Road as well. And uh, that ends my comments for this application, Chairman. Okay, very good, thank you. Jennifer, you want to uh, chime in on the um, encroachment and also, um, more importantly, I think, in terms of um, our role in terms of the site plan for uh, coverage. You know, we had a discussion this morning, and I think you made a determination that uh, that would be something the planning board would have to handle. Sure. So um, with respect to the encroachments onto the Whippoorwill Club property, um, encroachments onto another property, um, or it's a matter, it's a private matter between the two property owners. I think we heard from Mr. Serignano that the applicant is proposing to remove those encroachments from the Whippoorwill property, which is great. Um, but anything on the Whippoorwill property would not be included in the calculations for this particular project. Um, and I think we heard from Alan that that those calculations presented did not include the coverages from the Whippoorwill Will property. Um, with respect to the uh, development coverage, yes, the applicant will need a variance, an area variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals. I think they have a pending application as we heard. Um, although it is also, it's within the, the planning board's jurisdiction to approve the SWIP that's gonna be required as Mr. Scioli just outlined. So um, I, I would encourage the planning board to work with the applicant about um, discussing whether any further reductions can be made in development coverage um, in your role as the approval authority for the SWEP. Okay, very good. Good. Um, did uh, Sabrina, we can't see this, the uh, screen. There's someone with a hand up, did you say? There, there is, Chairman. Okay, can we, uh, Carrie, can you recognize the, uh, uh, or identify the person so that the person can speak? Mike, uh, in the interim, um, the driveway is now paved and it was gravel before? Uh, well, it was paved when we bought it. Uh-huh. Yes. And now, when we bought it. and now what is it? Yes. No, it, it is paved today, okay. and it was that way when we purchased it. Apparently, according to the earlier testimony, the, uh, the 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 aerial uh, shots indicate that it was previously gravel for right. our ownership. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we have a comment from uh, a member of the public. Yes. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. This is Clifford Davis. Um, I am counsel for Walter and Stacy Kerchak. They reside at 8 Frog Rock Road, the neighbors uh, to the south of 10 Frog Rock Road. Um, I submitted an email on uh, February 17th. I hope that um, no action is taken tonight and the hearing continues. I had spoke to uh, Sabrina Hull today and she indicated to me that that would probably happen. Um, but our, our main concerns are, are privacy. And as Mr. Sirignano was stating, uh, dealing with certain windows which were facing the South and which we thought we had an agreement. And if we do have an agreement, it should somehow be built into um, the, the site plan approval. So what I'm hoping is that Mr. Sirignano and his team could uh, submit to the board <coughs> what they think the plan is and then my clients can review it, um, and then we would give the sign off at the next meeting. Um, but as of right now, um, what Mr. Sirignano just says casually, um, it's not set forth anywhere. They haven't agreed to anything. They've only said that they plan on doing it, uh, like it cemented before this board. Further, um, I just wanted a confirmation as to whether this was actually a pre-existing apartment, as my understanding from my client is that there is no kitchen presently in the apartment. So is that an apartment that pre-exists in which they're trying to legalize it? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I think you've heard from us before, just uh, comments from uh, other board members, of course, we've taken, but 
Sabrina, I think we, uh, as you uh, referenced before, we customarily see the other parcels, uh, the, the, the development on the other parcels, you know, the case of parcels, so we know exactly, you know, the scale, <clears throat> how far or close they are. Um, we, it seems to me that we normally see a floor plan and elevations on accessory apartment applications, so we Correct. should see that. Um, and uh, that should be submitted, and, and so that we have that. Uh, those are just my preliminary issues and comments. Board members, any thoughts? I, well, I have a, I'm, I'm curious where we stand with um, uh, you know, paved driveways versus ones that at least let some water through. Uh, maybe Bob, uh, you know, could, somebody can help me there on that. Um, are we allowing that, and does that benefit the uh, applicant if they were to switch back, Mr. Ciola? Well, when you have a gravel driveway, it allows obviously a little bit more infiltration of the water, <clears throat> not as much as grass, but a lot more than asphalt, and the curve number reflects that too. So, you know, really what you have to do is Alan, I'm preaching to the choir with Alan, he knows this inside and out, you'd have to see what the curve number is of the gravel, then you know what the curve number is of the asphalt, and do the difference and see what the runoff is and come up with some mitigation measures to treat the water for uh, its runoff rate and also for water quality and volume as well, and also for the patio. So yes, you do have more runoff when you go from gravel to, to asphalt, there's no doubt about it. Not as much as from grass to asphalt, but there is an increase in runoff nonetheless. Yeah, you know, I know that it doesn't change the development footage. Uh, no, development coverage is anything man-made on the surface. So gravel is development, asphalt is development. Uh, but they did increase the areas of the actual driveway when you look at the uh, Google GIS maps. And just for the record, that when you go to 2016, it was gravel, a little bit smaller driveway. When you go to 2018, that's when you see the, the improvement. So obviously, it was between 2016 and 2018 when they did the improvements, which I guess, uh, based on the owner, that's pre prior to them purchasing the house, I would imagine. Well, so there's a potential area for maybe a trade or at least making uh, it back to, you know, the size that it was in, in 2016. Uh, and that might help. Well, that's what we're looking for is, is additional things that, that get it back so that we can feel comfortable. My sense is that that, um, you know, it's going to be almost impossible to get it back to where it should have been. But it's a question of what else, you know, we can do to uh, make the whole system, you know, above ground, below ground, everything, you know, that it's more palatable to us. Yeah, uh, forgive me, uh, we did have the elevations, I'm sorry. Yes, you do have. Yeah. And I would like to, to clarify this and a couple of points yes and, and the, the elevations will show you not not only the elevation but the floor plan a few things i would like to start my client reminded me and i know that may have relevance or not perhaps not because i know that properties could be sold but the present um, the plan for this accessory dwelling unit is for the, the modern law for the mother so she will be living here mm -hmm. so she she's more than of the applicant actually and yes, there was a kitchen in this unit, and we have documented, we have pictures, you are invited to come and see. And we have shown those photographs to the Board of Health, because the, the way that we obtained the no objection letter was by documenting what is there at the present, and there is a kitchen. And, and it's shown on the plans that you have mm -hmm. there, because you do have the plans of the no objection letter. So, so that is regarding what, what was existing there. Mm -hmm. So it's a small apartment. We are going to slightly increase it. I, I understand that. The, um, the other uh, question that was raised was uh, regarding the window that we have actually, uh, it has been documented extensively because as a matter of fact, we went to the, back to the ARB, you know, to show them that we were going to eliminate the tall window that we had here. And actually they said, oh, why are you doing that? You're outside of the setback line and why, why does that matter? I said, no, no. There's an agreement that we have with the owner, with the neighboring owner. They said, oh, okay, all right. So, so the, the, we also created a, this, this planting trellis on, on the side of the terrace to give them privacy. So this has been addressed, documented. It's in record with the town because we, we went back to the ARB and mm -hmm. obtained another approval. 
uh, just to put that in okay. in context. Well, thank that, you. That's a thank good you. move. It gives yes. both parties more privacy. It, it gives them exactly. Uh, and the, the the apartment that we're proposing, which you you have right there, oh. is a is a one bedroom uh, unit as well. As it exists at the moment, but it's it's a little more comfortable, yeah. as you will see on the plan. Yeah. Thank you. I think the, the issue that we have is, to the greatest extent possible, there's a lot of activity on this 1.8 acres at this point. It's sort of like a little mini carnival, you know, pool, tennis, terraces, and patios all over. And it's way over the normal coverage. So uh, I guess the, the, the task for you to make, echoing Dick's comments, to make us more comfortable, and I think uh, some of Bob's comments, is whatever we can do to pull those back, eliminate those, change them around and, and get this uh, to a more comfortable level. Bob, is it possible that it would pull it even out of the uh, requirements for a SWIFT if they really uh, pull back? Uh, quite honestly, I can't make that determination based on the okay. information that's provided. Uh, Alan Pilch would have to go through a thorough analysis with a graphical blow up and a table so I can clearly understand what's being removed, what's remaining what was added so i really can't make that determination on what was submitted at all yeah okay and, yeah and uh, also to to point out again you know these improvements haven't done haven't been done by our client no, we understand. you know they haven't been done in the past and i understand what uh, mr seol is referring to the you know that, that it was a gravel driveway probably compacted that is almost equivalent to asphalt maybe a little less as he's saying not as grass but it it, it was right. heavily compacted and you know there's not a lot of absorption that you'll get there. Right. So Alan will demonstrate, you know, what that uh, value has become. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Okay. And the other thing is narrowing the the uh, driveway back to the size that it was. And that was some, I saw that somewhere that that's being considered or, or done or well, what? Actually, when I, when I reviewed the, um, uh, the aerials and I went through them also, um, I, I think the driveway width has stayed fairly constant. I really do. What has happened is at the end of the driveway in front of the garage, it has been modified. Right. Not a lot of modification, but the, you know the the location of the the, the vegetated turnaround <coughs> has been modified over time. Um, and I think that was it. I think the principal change in the driveway is going from gravel to being you know asphalt. I think that really is it. I don't think the driveway has changed that much. When you really look at the aerials. Um, it doesn't look like the dimensions of it have changed significantly at all. And the width of the driveway right now is within code. I don't know. Yeah. 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 yeah, there's no, there's really no code for driveway widths. Oh, let's not forget the, Alan, let's not forget the patio area too, so. Well, there's two Behind patios the that we're talking about. One was the patio adjacent to the pool, which did expand. Um, the other is the patio in the rear of the building, which looks like it might have been expanded maybe 10 years ago or so. Um, th that looks like what had also been changed on it. Uh, the rest of it all looks like it was there when I sort of reviewed the um, GIS as well. So, um, as you know, and I think I'm right about this, um, the in purchasing a piece of property that has a conditions on it which are um, outside of the um, allowable zoning uh, planning uh, town regulations, because you purchase a property in that condition, it doesn't automatically convey grandfather status. In other words, these conditions are still <coughs> beyond what we normally would see. So. We could just, from my point of view, let's just take off the discussion, the fact that you found it this way. And let's talk about what it is and what we need to do, what, whether we decide we need to do something about it. And if so, up to you in the end, how, I think. And I, I'd like to focus on the weather and a target for that, right? How many square feet? What do we think we need to do? in order to bring this into conformance with the zoning code and to what extent coverage regulations and to what extent might the board, the town represented by this board, 
decide that maybe there is some um, extra for whatever reason, there might be some extra that we allow on the piece of property. I think that's what we ought to do. And we can talk about, well, we can do something about the driveway, we can take a patio out. Those are all options. But to me, coming up with a number or a percentage is really where we ought to go. And then you guys come back with, well, this is what we can do. I think that's a discussion we ought to have. And in that, in that vein, uh, Jennifer, Sabrina, unless I'm mistaken, we have the uh, authority to grant, what is it, 15% above the coverage, normal coverage maximums? Yeah. If we think there's justification for do, to, to do so. Well, that's for, that for a subdivision, I think. I think that's in a sub, right. your subdivision regulations, yeah, which is not. They're bucking up against the code restriction of yeah. development coverage. So it's separate and apart from previous approvals that you may have made with allowances. Okay. Yeah, that's only on conservation subdivisions, right? Okay, right. So yeah. right. Good to know. I should know that, but now I do. So thanks. So um, I I understand the positive good of um, accessory units, affordable housing, accessory. Those are all things that the town wants to do. I'm totally on board with that. I think that we are as a board mm -hmm. uh, on board with that. Um, I also think that the coverage regulations we have are positive good as well, and so. It's a matter, it, it's sort of, I think we're sort of being in, put in a position of like, you know, blame one against the other. Do we give up this in order to get that? And I don't think we have to give up either. And I don't think we ought to give up either. I think that we ought to hold firm on both of those regulations and have you come back and say, well, okay, we're not gonna do the affordable, we already have a unit there. So we're not adding an affordable housing unit. We, I'm, I'm sorry, an accessory unit. We already have one. So it's a matter of improving that. Um, or um, not improving that and keeping the coverage you have. Or, or improving it and taking away from some of the coverage you have in order to get back to get it back into what the, uh, what the code says. And that's where I am. I think we ought to get it back to 12,000 and figure out how to do it. You've got a tennis court there, which is, I don't know how many square feet of tennis court. Is it 30 by 60? I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's, no, it's usually about six to 7,000 square feet. How, how much? Six to 7,000. Roughly 7,000. I had to take a look and see what the plan is. Yeah. Say, it, there's a fair amount there. I mean, it, it, the problem I'm having is that if we do, if, if we grant this, we're put in a position of, well, what do we do the next time somebody comes in? And how do we deal with that? One of, one of the objections to, to, I think, one of the objections you often hear about um, accessory units is that it increases the density of a neighborhood. And that's one of the reasons people don't like it. And I think that's a legitimate point of view. I don't, you know, I don't think that, that it's necessarily legitimate enough to take away the, uh, the ability for the town to do this, but it's a legitimate point of view. And in this particular case, it seems to me that we are increasing the development coverage, which is density in terms of, of development on the property and in the neighborhood, in order to get a in order to get a, a, an a, a, an accessory dwelling. And we don't have to do that. I mean, we just don't. Right? And one thought that in this whole vein that you've created, um, uh, and we're talking about, is is that. You know, given that the the tennis court is a little bit under 6,500 square feet, which takes you a huge way towards getting back get into this. And one of the things that strikes me is that that um, since Whippoorwill is right next door, um, you know, you could probably get uh, an access. You know. I would think you should ask Whippoorwill, would they be willing to give you, you know, have an access way there that people could walk from the private property onto the Whippoorwill um, property because they have tennis courts there, right? You need a membership though. That's right. But the membership comes with other things too. So it's a question of uh, what do we do here? It's, 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 it's not going to be, you know, 6,000 
$457 per year. It's something much more modest than that, but there is a way to you know keep the tennis, uh, but not on your property. If you ask, and, and they would ask, you'd have to have a gate with a, with a lock, you know, so that uh, people don't go back and forth uh, just on a flyer. But that's one way to gain a lot, um, you know, of goodwill. In in far as we're concerned. Um, so the tennis court is could be one big thing, but I don't, I mean, at this point, I don't think we're here to tell you, you know, what you should let go of in terms of the development coverage in order to get this thing back into conformance. And I don't, I would say that even if this project doesn't go forward, even if this application uh, um, goes away, you guys decide not to do this, you still have a problem. You're out of conformance here. And I don't know what to, to what extent the town will decide that they, you know, need to do something about this. But I, I don't know how you're going to deal with that if the town decides to do something about this. But it seems to me that, you know, now's the time to correct the situation. Um, is your tennis court uh, hard true or is it uh, paved? <coughs> paved? Paved. It's pre-existing. Okay. Uh, well, look, we'll obviously have a conversation with the homeowners, the clients, about uh, uh, yeah. searching for additional areas of impervious surface. Uh, they've already done and proposed eliminating more than the new construction uh, involves. In terms of, of density, we're not proposing increased density. We already have the accessory apartment, and, and we're just making it more comfortable for mother or mother-in-law. So, but we're not creating a new accessory apartment that was never on this site before. So I don't think uh, we're, we can be criticized for increasing density here, we're not. Well, I'm sorry. So first of all, you're adding a bedroom, I think, or an extra room. Yeah. Okay. Extra room, it's okay. still a one bedroom. That's fine. So I'm using density in a different term, not necessarily in terms of population density or uh, FAR density. I'm talking about the impacts of uh, development. Oh, okay. Right? And that is also density on the landscape. Okay. So that's probably the wrong word, but I think you understand what I'm. I do now. Yeah. And I, th I think one of the other issues is, is, of course, is that you have an apartment there, but it's it's not legal at this point. So one of the parts of this application well, that's is, why is here. to legalize it. Well, legal, no, we do for two things. You're legalizing and expanding it. So it's really two parts, two steps. Uh, so we understand that. And again, I, I think you'll hear from us that we're very much in favor of working with folks with accessory apartments, but your, your coverage is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's way over. So as, as Tom said, I, I will leave it to you to come back. First of all, we, we do need the basics to show us where the other properties are and the other developments, the houses are, uh, approximate to this application, and then uh, come back to us and uh, be as creative as you possibly can to try to get as close as possible to, uh, to conformance. Help us so that we can help you. Yeah, and, and, and that's fine. But you know, I don't think that uh, you're saying if the application was uh, eliminated and, well, and my clients decide not to go, then the town will have to also track down not only this property but over hundreds and thousands that um, maybe are in coverage. That. Uh, so that's not our job that's a town that's job. right yeah. that's right yeah. but i understand and uh, and by okay. the way this is not the first time this has happened to this board right you've so, come with applications and and they're they're um and they're non-conforming and so we right. deal with it then and that's what we're trying to do right and, uh, but also to know that uh, some of this coverage it, it dates back to 70 80 years ago no before zoning was in 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 effect so that's very important to know. It's not like it has been done and it has all been done because they wanted to do uh, breaking the law. There was no law. That's when some of the work was done. There's a law now. That is correct, well, but, it, but it's, there's grandfathering. I'm just pointing it's out, I understand okay. what you're saying. We're, we're not looking work. for an argument. Yeah. Yes, yeah, okay. yeah. right. We, we will provide the drainage that Mr. Scioli requested. We'll cl clarify the charts, yep. the runoffs. We will do a decrease of, of coverage as, as as much as we can, and yep. we appreciate that. If there's, if there's dry land around, Alan can find it. Thank you, yes.
Thank you very much. Thank Mr. You. Chairman, Mr. Davis has his hand raised again. Oh, okay, thank you. Yes, Mr. Davis. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chairman, again, I represent Walter and Stacey Kerchak. I'll be very brief. Um, I had just well, was hoping that the board could direct the applicant because the architect, you know, raises up the thing about the ARB. There was nothing finalized at the ARB. There was talk of an agreement, but we would like to have the precise, um, uh, I guess, designs of what they were going to do to protect my client's privacy with regarding the windows and the elevation. So I would ask that if, if the architect could provide that to the planning board for the next meeting. Well, they're going to provide the, the elevations. Uh, again, we'll look at those in the, in the outside exterior. And that's one of the reasons why we asked for the location of the other property so we can assess the, the distance and proximity and elevations, et cetera, uh, how the, the, the ground slope, uh, the slopes. So that's what we're really asked for. It's not that we're particularly nosy about where your client's uh, house is. So um, that's all part of it. So that'll be part of what we'll consider when we hear it. I would just ask the applicant if, if they could give us the courtesy of showing what they think was the agreement and submit it to myself or to my client um, to review it ahead of time. I think what Teo was trying to explain is that he submitted the revised plans at pursuant to the agreement to the to the architecture review board and they approved the, the modifications. So there's a record there. I think that's all Teo was trying to point out. And, and Mr. Davis, we have no problems sending you, uh, you know, electronic copies of the revised plans. Great. Okay. Super. Well, 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 first of all, we had no notice of that meeting at the ARB. So well, that's, that's not for us. <laughs> no, no, yeah. but all, all that I'm saying is <laughs> uh, all, no, no. all, all that I'm saying is if Mr. Sirignano and his team, if, if they could provide that information to us so we're all on the same page. I think you just, so said, they, I think you just said yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So thank you, Mr. Is, uh, we'll continue the public hearing. And wait to hear. Do we have to set a date, Jennifer or Sabrina, uh, even if it's in light pencil? Yes, we do have to set a date. And if there's not a submission um, by the deadline for that date, we'll just have to uh, notice an adjournment. But there does have to be a date set tonight. So, what would be the submission deadline for the next meeting? But it can't be the next meeting. <laughs> Would be the next available <laughs> submission date for the okay. next available one. For the yeah. March 21st meeting, the submission deadline is February 27th. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, we'll, we'll shoot for that if you could put us over. Sure. The so we'll do it as March 21st then? Yeah, yes. March 21st. So we'll schedule the continuation of the public hearing on March 21. March 21. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you so much, thank you. members. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Have a good one. Bob. Bye-bye. Uh, Mrs. Scioli. Bye-bye. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Um, and I guess, you know, it would be interesting to see a, um, a series of uh, overhead shots of this property, uh, you know, the, you make you make them they, they're made every uh, day now you know just flying here checking the your property and see if it's for sale or whatever but can we track it back reasonably in in you know like 20 years or 30 years back to what was there to begin with there was quite a bit of improvements on the property if you if you go on Westchester County GIS <laughs> municipal tax view you go back you can go back to 1947 but as Mr. Teo stated before, there were many, many improvements on that site many, many years ago. My concern with stormwater is anything that was built after April 2007. That's mm -hmm. when the rules and regulations came into be. So that's what I focus on with stormwater. Anything that was built after that date and time is now the time to bring it up to code. Um, but okay. there was many, many mm -hmm. items there. You can go look for yourself and see how much was on that site you know, well over 25, 30 years ago. I'm focusing on the driveway and the patio. Those two items were built after 2007, which should have required a permit at that time or a stormwater plan at that time. That's okay. my focus. There's also, um, Google Earth is great mm -hmm. because at Google Earth, there actually is a time bar 
and they go back to like around here, I think it's 85, 89. Mm -hmm. You can actually on the time bar, you can slide the time bar and it will give you photographs. Hmm. Yeah, because if, if if this was done before the, the rules went into effect, uh, and you know, then to me, there's got to be a statute of limitations and somehow, and so I don't know that you can go back and take that off, um, but you can prevent Fair enough. The fewer stuff, the newer stuff. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah so that might help them too. Yeah, they have some work to do. They can demonstrate it was built many, many, many years ago before the zoning, but they have to check with the building inspector to see when the zone zoning codes were changed. And it takes a lot of research. Uh, it depends how much due diligence they do for the next meeting. Okay, good. Thank you. So we will not hear the Panetti uh, application for two Main Street Kisco Park. The applicant has pulled that from the agenda. We'll see it next time around. So our next item is uh, Nick. 60 uh, Algonquin Drive, and this is an application for a site development plan approval for construction of a swimming pool. Good evening, um, Chairman and members of the board. <coughs> Robert Sherwood, landscape architect representing the client, Joseph Nix. Um, my client purchased the property in the fall of 2022, so just about six, seven months ago, and he contacted me about trying to develop a swimming pool on the property. Um, I do have some visuals on boards um, to demonstrate what's going on. Um, there is, you know, this is part of the 60 Algonquin. I could show, first of all, an aerial map of the property. As you come up Algonquin, it is on the right-hand side of the property, kind of at the base of that slope coming up. Roughly 1.4 acre lot, obviously developed when he bought it for the driveway. The residents, a deck out the back and a small terrace in this area of the, the property, kind of on this, what you, you would say is kind of the south, um, some west side of the property. Where we're looking to develop the swimming pool is adjacent, very close to, if not removing some of this existing terrace to build our pool. And the limits of the site, um, the septic system is in the backyard here in Excuse the large. Me. You can see that, but I can't. Uh, so I was trying to make it go. convenient for. That's good. You Thank got you. it. Yep. So in the backyard, it is the um, uh, septic system, and we are obviously um, one of the comments in what we're doing as well. Going to Westchester County Department of Health for implementation of that, and we retain the services of uh, Master Monocle Engineers, who um, were the original um, engineers that did the subdivision. So we're kind of trying to place the, the pool in the best area for the use and for environmental reasons. In a little bit larger scale blow up, as you can see, the existing driveway pulls around. There is um, some development here. There's an existing terrace. There is an existing wall that's in here. And what we're doing is putting the pool at the elevation of the terrace. And the swimming pool will have very minimal new um, terrace built, if any. Um, and the pool would actually project out into the lawn and actually the pool wall will act as a retaining wall so it'll be about a four foot high um, kind of drop to the lawn area that exists down here and i have some photos so, so that will be the actual wall of the pool yes yep so in the top left corner of this proposal you can kind of see this depiction is the existing terrace there's an outside fireplace that exists there is an existing wall that kind of wraps through here, which we'd obviously remove, and the swimming pool would kind of create its own wall. Um, so really it's shallow end, there is a spa in this part of the pool, but the deep end is um, only gonna be six feet deep. So there's really not even a lot of excavation that's gonna happen. Uh, this is kind of the shot looking towards the closest neighbor. Um, and this is kind of looking back towards the house in here. Underneath this shot, it's kind of in the same angle. Here's this existing wall, the site development, the small fireplace, and that pool would kind of be out in here. This wall would go, some of this wall would be manipulated as well. Um, this is a view from the existing terrace, kind of looking due west. Um, and then I showed a little bit of this property line, and there is a drainage easement on the property. And this final photograph in here depicts and shows the, the drainage swale, which is a riprap swale. Um, clearly it was built when they did the subdivision. There's a drain pipe that dumps into this. It flows down and 
out of the back of the property. And that's on the south side of the property, right? Yes, which is called the south side. That drainage is runs down and through here and then out. Uh -huh. um, for the aerial map, just showing kind of the location of the property, the different neighboring properties and where they have their pools kind of all in the same location on the uphill side. We're going up. Topography is kind of coming down this way. Um, and I'm sure these were all built the same way because of the septic system constraints, et cetera. Hmm. Um, backtracking a little bit, I forgot to mention that the original subdivision plan, why we're really in front of you on the planning board side, two issues. One, the original plat, original subdivision said any pools, swimming, uh, swimming pools, tennis courts, et cetera, would need planning board review and approval. And the other thing is we kind of unfolded the layers of someone new buying a property and some items that were expanded, coverage cal calculations, development coverage, we are over on that. And we do have an application to zoning board. Um, and we'll, we've already talked, how do we bring that down in scale? That overage, we're allowed 10,600 square feet. We're at 11,700, um, so we're like 1,100 square feet over our limit. Um, with the pool being in that, obviously, and the pools roughly with the pool and the pool coping is about 800 square feet. So creatively, we're going to look at removing a lot of the driveway expansion that had occurred since the, the property was built. And I believe um, Mr. Scioli's memo brings that up that, you know, historically there's, there was some call it development creep, mm -hmm. um, unbeknownst to the, again, unbeknownst to the client. Um, and that kind of sums up what I was going to present to you all tonight. Like I said, we are Is working with Westchester County. Are we currently Park. over the coverage limit right now before the pool? Yes. No. You're over by that 1100? Not by 1100 because that, that includes that, the pool. Right. That would be removing, the removing some of the terrace to put that pool in. So we're over probably five, 600 square feet. And the pool being 800 square feet, but we're removing some of that terrace. So there's a play on numbers there. But it's, I forget the exact number. I think it was 140. You'll end up being over. Yes. But you're over right now by. A simple math. Let's just say it's like 1,200 or uh, 800 minus the 1,100, 300 square feet, but it's a little okay. bit more than that. Okay, great. Super. <clears throat> Super, do you want to run through your uh, memo? Sure. Um, uh, we fucked up the numbers. <laughs> check, check your math. The math is good. The math is good. And, and so this is a type two action um, is similar to the other application. So there's no further review under the State Environmental Quality Review Act. Um, this application is completely zoning compliant with setbacks and, you know, everything else. So there's no concern there. Um, the aerial that the applicant is showing right now is fantastic. So he should probably submit that to become part of the record, um, which will take care of my next comment regarding the location of the surrounding houses. That's very helpful. Um, and as the applicant indicated, this is uh, there's an overage of uh, 1,140 square feet. So the development coverage limit was 10,653 square feet. Um, so, you know, as he indicated, they're gonna look for ways to reduce it further, but um, that's kind of where we sit right now with needing a variance for the 1,140 square feet that it is. Okay. Dennis, you have comments on this one? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so <laughs> under the... Uh, Site plan comments, I, I just, you know, had my bullets, um, just really clarifications at this, uh, at this stage. And I was just curious about the, about the spacing. I mean, presumably this is for, for screening, but um, just, just want to see what that would be. Uh, and then it's funny that you mentioned, um, I agree. I think Westchester GIS is a great tool. Um, and sometimes though, depending on what layers you turn on, uh, I felt the need to uh, sort of justify um, not only what's listed on the plan, but but the results of my own inspection that indeed uh, that feature um, on the uh, side of the property, I guess, which would be to the south, uh, I would concur that it's a swale 
And I just wanted to, in this memo, sort of provide, um, you know, both under as defined in the town code, as well as the Clean Water Act, uh, that that indeed, you know, would be a uh, not a regulated water course, uh, not not considered a water of the United States. So I just kind of went through that that exercise just for uh, record keeping purposes. And I have a feeling from some of the future applications you're going to see that I've been privy to um, a similar um, description. You know, maybe I won't go into this level of detail, but at least it provides a baseline going forward as to how we sort of separate these things out in the field in terms of what's a resource that's regulated and what is just indeed a feature that carries water when it's available only during uh, storm events or when someone leaves the hose on. Okay, good. Very good, thank you. Uh, Bob, you had some comments? Uh, yes, good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Uh, again, I used my uh, most valuable tool, it seems of late, is the Westchester County, Westchester County uh, Municipal Viewer, which is a GIS program. And again, as uh, Robert said earlier, they did some improvements to the driveway. Evidently, it used to be all gravel when this uh, subdivision came in many, 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 many years ago. Uh, everything true. everything was gravel. Excuse me? Yeah, Watch, be careful. Yeah, it was that many years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, this was the whole uh, promulation. This was the whole startup of all the coverage counts and the 115 and the 110, as you recall, Robert. But anyway, let me digress here. Um, they put in some areas that are now permeable pavers, which again, has a different curve number than gravel, which is over a thousand square feet, which needs chapter 108A. And also they put in a new flagstone patio, which is on the... Uh, western part of the house, which has to be now picked up in stormwater, because that's increasing and creating more runoff and peak flows. Um, so that's definitely over a thousand square feet. So I would highly recommend they have someone look at that, to submit something on that swift. Uh, number two, I would definitely demarcate the areas of disturbance because um, not only will the pool area be disturbed, you have to show some access route and also the access route and how you're gonna maintain the uh, protection of the existing septic laterals during the installation of the new 13 linear feet of laterals that Mr. Master Monaco computed, number two. Uh, number three, just uh, you might wanna revise the area of being disturbed. I believe what you put in there is just the pool that might be going up a little bit, I would imagine. And in this particular case, with the redesign of the total septic, because I see Mr. Master Monaco used the latest and greatest codes that were just adopted by the county not too long ago, which superseded SD Bulletin 22. Uh, I would highly recommend that we wait till we get approval on the county on that, just to make certain that they do agree with Mr. Master Monaco's logic on how he downsized the existing system from originally 940 down to 688. So I would recommend to the board that we know for a fact that is approved because if it's not, he's gonna have to contend with about 230 feet of laterals as opposed to 13 feet. So that ends my comments for tonight, Mr. Chairman. So on that last point, then you were, you would not be comfortable if we were so inclined to condition, to put out a resolution with a condition on it. You would wanna make sure that we had that done first. Make sure that yes. we had Yes, sir. Where, where to jump to jump in here is the the applicant once again and just speak to Mr. Cioli. We are expecting um, comment letter back next week from Westchester County Department of Health. We have you know discussed it with them, and um, so hopefully by next week we'll have something maybe even to resubmit to you guys. Where where is, where's the uh, pool equipment going to be uh, located? Good question. We were um, thinking about putting it on the downhill side. I have to show a, a pad for that downhill thing on the knee. So, there'll be a little bit more coverage than with a concrete pad. Yeah, there'll be a little bit more. I was thinking you'd be put down in there. So, I think that is a consideration. Show that. Although well, we have the uh, GIS that shows you the houses and mm -hmm. that you could also show the locations on, on your map of where the homes. Because one of the things that we look at is the pool equipment and how close it is and how that kind of Certainly. I'll take it. Yes. Yeah. So, if we can see the neighbor's improvements. On their properties, no details, just you know, 
like a box where the house is. Okay. Maybe the property might be not gonna get much information. No, no, no. Okay. Anyone uh, questions, comments? No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, can I just mention, I think I saw um, some photos and, and other things being displayed by the applicant that weren't in the packet. Just anything that wasn't in the packet should be submitted to the board for the record. So we have that um, in the record. Yes, absolutely. So we'll, we'll um, Jennifer, this has to go to public hearing. It does, yes. Are we there at this point? Are we comfortable or should we wait to get this information from the, the county uh, on, on the Board of Health? It seems like that's a kind of an important issue. Yes. Okay. So I guess we'll do continue then as, as an informal. So if you can get the other information into us, as soon as we can see that approval from the Board of Health, then we'll be in good shape to, to move forward. Okay. But if, if, if you wish to move it forward, you know, uh, the comments that we've heard this evening and um, get the next submission and we can we can hear it in maybe what March 21st yeah. if we submit by the 27 yes right if we is we, that fair we, enough is yeah that, if we have a Westchester County Health Department approval by the 27th could we then change that to a public hearing uh, we might if we get enough time in advance to notice it do you have enough time Felicia if you get it on the 27th to notice it Okay, just I'm throwing it out there. So if, if we do get it, can we do that? Or great. do we have to notice a public hearing now? Do we have to schedule? We it? have to notice it. The question is, do you, it's Felicia, I didn't hear. Did you have enough time? I do. So we can notice it for a public hearing if that information comes in. Okay. okay. All right. We'll see what we can do. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank Good. you guys so much. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Enjoy the okay. evening. <clears throat> Too late for that. It's <laughs> an efficient break time. Sure. Yeah. We still have like four hours. So you know what's today. funny? Just off the record, I used to live on 15 Frog Rock and the house panel across the street. I mean, that was just. Wow, well, okay. Nice to... I, I know who bought the house before. They were the uh, the Z Bar guys. Yep. yep. And they just. They just. Yep. That was across the street. That was the you too. Yep. Well, hopefully you'll enjoy this property more. <laughs> you know what my wife told me? That's why we're moving. The encroachment. Is it second only to uh, Putin in terms of encroachment? Right. Yeah, this is the night for you know overages. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I guess, uh, Gary, we're just, if you could uh, turn us off right now, we're waiting because uh, Tom's out right now on a break, so we don't have a quorum. So are we calling a brief recess? I guess. Let's call a brief recess, five minutes? Yeah. Five minutes, that's good. That's fine, yeah, that's good. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Look who's there. Look at the top. Well, so that's me. Chuck. Chuck, you know. You should be. All set? Hello. Hello, Chuck. We're all set. Good evening, evening. I'm set. We're going to the next item, which is the Holmes 101 King Street application for a site development plan approval to convert an attic space to a studio uh, apartment. <clears throat> We good? Yep, we got it. All right. Um, the uh, the uh, uh, I'll, the the focus of our our of the work is this red square down here. Uh, I've put in the square footage, which wasn't on your copies. It's on mine now. It's four hundred and thirty three square feet of a studio apartment, and um, this is the homes and Kennedy. Whoops, I got to share again. <clears throat> Stop share. Share again. And share. 
wish we could flop back and forth. Um, this is the Holmes and Kennedy, was the Holmes and Kennedy, now it's GLR real estate building on King Street. And uh, right now there's an attic in this particular spot right here. Um, and what we're doing is raising this roof up four feet and leaving the, the ridge exactly where it is and just changing the slope and getting rid of this dormer. Uh, somebody thought that was going to, I think somebody, anyway. That, and, then, and then putting a, a studio apartment on top, and I'll show you what that looks like. And I'm going to stop sharing. It's on top of the office. <clears throat> it's on top of the office, right? And I'm going to share screen again, and I'm going to show you what it looks like in SketchUp. Um, <clears throat> this is the office, and you know, these are the, this is the massing model. This is the line of the existing roof that you saw in the picture. And this is the, I'm raising this up four feet and then just running the rafters back uh, to the ridge. Um, it ties in nicely with, with the existing, well, that's an existing E or Eve line and, and overhang, but I'm, I'm continuing that overhang all the way to the end and of course around the building. But in that in that new roof, I added instead of a dormer, I added a nice another roof, which is the basis of some of the space upstairs. This will be a living area. On the back is a kitchen area, and in the area underneath the roof, the other 400 feet is is a bathroom, uh, closets, and loft bedroom. So that's and that's. This is, I haven't finished doing the whole study. I'll do that, I guess, for A or B, but this is what the front is now looking like. Um, and I'll go back if I can. What, what's the access? How, how does one get to the apartment? Right here. You go in this door and up the steps. Oh, I see. So you're putting some stairs in there? Or were they there? No, just, no there's no stairs there. I'm taking space out of the lower floor of the office and going straight up to the, law, to the uh, attic floor which is now uh it it's really if you, there's there's a code requirement you see this line that's that is a five foot height uh, that that's how you measure the floor area from five foot height to five foot height not the outside walls but you measure floor area from habitable space at five foot height that five foot height then travels up to a flat ceiling at seven foot six that area has to be 50% of the two side slopes, which it is, and we end up with a legal habitable space. Um, uh, five foot high here, four foot high at the wall. And at the midpoint, we're 16 foot off of, it's, it's 16 feet off of the, the grade. However, <clears throat> there is an average grade for the rest of the building somewhere down here, and that's where the 22 foot shows up. I think somebody asked about a new, why is that? Height different. Well, I, I measured the new average grade for the whole building, and it ends up coming up uh, from the midpoint down to average grade at the 22, whatever the number was. Let me look at it. Somebody tell me what the average, what the height was. I know I switched it. It was 23 to 27, Chuck. Yeah, it's a now it's 27 feet average height from midpoints all the way down to uh, average grade. So, so Chuck, I, I think that this visual is very helpful. It would be helpful if you submitted some type of visual like this to uh, to, to to complete the application. I sure will. I I I, I read your memo and then said I better do a visual. <laughs> it, it works. So here we go. Um, and I'm going to need that for build, for building department anyway. But it, I just had it. I just I I I I wasn't prepared for building department just yet. That's okay. It's okay. But appreciate the, the There's some other there were some other questions. I'm gonna go back to, to try to I'm gonna go back to stop share and share again. Somebody has to teach me how to do that. What I did do for you also is I started putting in um, areas see up here in the corner. This is the existing building that we we're building right now. Um, and I have a, an area of this apartment is, this is a duplex, total 674 square feet. 
if anybody needs those numbers. Here's the, the other one is 694 square feet. And in the basement, we'll have a third unit, which is 622 square feet. Add all that up and if, it adds up to 1900 feet of, of residential use. And, um, I don't know, I, I didn't put any of those numbers down. I just did the parking counts for the yep. units, but now I can verify they're all less than a thousand square feet for you. That's why you needed the numbers. Yep. And over here, there's a number missing. This is supposed to be another 674. And when you add that all up, it comes up to the 1418, actually 1419 of building B, which is a two story building back here. <clears throat> Okay, Sabrina, did you have any uh, questions you want to run through your memo? Sure. Um, he, uh, you know, Chuck did a great job explaining the height difference and kind of getting, you know, I, I had asked for an explanation and elevations. And if he submits that, that will satisfy that. Um, you know, the putting the apartment uh, above the office is consistent with the town code. Um, the size thresholds are compliant with the town code, and um, it's a type two action under CICRA. Uh, I asked Chuck to put the parking on the plans. They are in the parking district, and he does show adequate parking spaces on the lot. Uh, uh, I, I don't think we're in the parking district. We're in business. No, no. we're in business retail, but what we are mm -hmm. is taking advantage of a 15% uh, joint use shared parking, which I don't need in this particular case. I need. Yeah, no, no. I think you are in the parking district, but you, you're the property is located in the parking district. However, you have your own parking lot. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I think the parking district is back here, Sabrina. Oh no, you are correct. It is not in the parking district. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, but uh, but we are. But you have enough parking. parking, so it's okay. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we've got our own, we've, we've, we've provided our own parking. And, and what's really interesting is when we look at it, I, there's two mm -hmm. units in this building, one in the basement, which is now legal, and one in the attic above the dentist. There is three in this basement. Uh, there is one in the attic, which is a total of four. Somebody keep track of the numbers. There are six. This is going to be six more in the future. We have a building permit application, not before you yet, but for six units here. And over here, there's in this apartment in D, there are ooh, there are five one bedrooms and one studio. So there's six there, six here, four here and two there, 12, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 18 units on, um, on this property with plenty of parking and it's 18 units and it's invisible basically. Which I think is kind of like a, a, a kind of like, kind of like you know, easy easy housing. <laughs> anyway, I'm done with that speech. <laughs> okay, good. Sorry, um, <laughs> I couldn't help myself. So, Sabrina, did you run through your comments? I did. Um, you know, so basically, as long as he submits the calculations or the <clears throat> the elevations <throat> and whatnot, I yep. think that the application is complete. Good. But let so, me get clear. Let me get clear, Sabrina. Can I? Can I? Can I just give you some of this stuff? Like yes. Some, something like that that shows both sides. Okay. Yeah. Just give me what you showed tonight. It's fine. All right. You don't have All to right. finish it. Good. And then we can schedule a public hearing on this in the uh, yep. Yep. So, is there? <clears throat> does that sound appropriate? To schedule a public hearing on this. Sounds good to me. And I don't yeah. think we have to. There's not much that you have to do. So, do you want to try for the March 21? Do we have enough room on it? March 21, Chuck, and you have to have your material in uh, with those minor changes, February 27th? February 27th. No problem. Do we want to uh, ask staff to draw a uh, resolution up? Sure. At this point, because it's so. in anticipation of approval. Is there a motion to do that? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So we'll uh, schedule for public and uh, have a resolution drafted ready for you, Chuck. Thank you. Have a good All night, right. Chuck. Good night. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick around and I'm gonna hang around and watch you guys. I'm gonna, okay. But I'll say good night. Good night. <laughs> We're gonna demote you to audience participation. No, I'm not doing anything tonight. I'll watch <laughs> it. 
Okay, we have two requests uh, for extension. First is the Chappaqua Central School District, the application for a preliminary subdivision plat, steep slope permit, tree removal permit, stormwater pollution prevention plan, uh, Button Hook Road and Sabina Road. Um, so they're, they're, I don't know, make one step forward and six steps, six steps backwards with the uh, DEP. And uh, so, uh, Bob, you indicated that uh, <coughs> the, the list, the uh, information that the DEP is requesting just seems to keep growing. Uh, that is correct, Chairman. And also, too, they're going to have comments coming from Mr. Donald Lake of uh, the Inspector General's office. So uh, we'll be getting those soon. As soon as I get them, I will give them to Sabrina and they can put them in the planning board file and we'll send them to uh, the applicant. Okay. So no issues with regard to the uh, extension? So uh, is there a motion on the grant the extension that the applicant has requested? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we have the uh, New York City EP Town of Newcastle. This is the um, um, the, the new CNCR 801 Courtmel Road Channel Stabilization on New York City EP Property 24 and 40 Courtmel uh, Road. Application for steep slopes permit, stormwater management, erosion and sedimentation control tree permit, tree permit approval. So uh, we have an extension here. Apparently, uh, uh, there have been some delays. Um, and the tree removal permit uh, needs to be extended. Any issues with regard to this? This is a, I think, a project that we all looked at. It was very, very favorable, favorable from the standpoint of the town. Right? Fine, maybe. Is there a motion then to grant the uh, extension requested? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, you want to take the minutes first and then just go into the, the final discussion? Yeah. Why don't we do that? So sort of we feel like we've really achieved a lot here by 8.30 or so. Uh, so why don't we take the minutes of January 3? Any material changes? Uh, yeah, one. Okay. Uh, page 2 of 7, line 44. Um, what I stated was that others say the building appears to be unsafe. Ah, okay. That's important. Uh, actually, I had a, top, a question for you, Tom. At the bottom of uh, line 64 on, on uh, page 3, uh -huh. did you say not or not think it was a good idea, or did you say it was, was a good idea? Why would I say it would not be? Yeah, I thought it's not, 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 like not should be not should be deleted. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes I speak in double negative, so I confuse myself even. <laughs> That's okay. It's, it's the iambic pentameter. Yeah. 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 Any other? Thank you for that, Bob. Okay. If not, uh, is there a motion to adopt the minutes as amended? So second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 At least I have a couple of very minor little things. Okay. But not material. Well, the not was on there. <laughs> that was material. Uh, January 10 minutes. Anyone have any questions or issues on this? Uh, the only thing is nobody recognized my birthday. That's, uh, anyway, other than that, no, I have no comments. Aside, no from that, aside from that slide, is there a motion to adopt the minutes as as gone? So moved. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. I didn't have any changes at all. Now. And we have the minutes of January seventeen. Yeah. No comment. Yeah, I didn't have any on that. I just outlined some things for my own identification. Anyone else? Is there a motion to adopt then the minutes of January 17th is drawn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And finally, we have the minutes of January 24th. Well, we had a problem. I wasn't here. So we cannot do January 24th. Well, I so, well, there's a way we have. You can if you if you uh, did. I read it, read it, and watch it. And 
Just stay at home. You know, yeah. Separately. <laughs> right. Let's do it. Like the home version of the Tag War game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I don't have any, uh, any any comments that would make any sense at this point. Jennifer, is it okay if we adopt the minutes? Even though uh, Dick wasn't here, but he's familiarized himself with the meeting and the, the material? Yeah, if Dick has reviewed the meeting, um, and is familiar with the material, then he can vote on, on the minutes. He wasn't in attendance. Yeah, that's me. Okay. So is there a motion then to adopt the minutes of January 24? Awesome. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we're all set. So the next and last thing is the referral from the town board uh, discussion. This is on the local law referral NG0 legislation to amend chapter 60 of the code of the town of Newcastle to establish a special use permit for mixed use residential buildings that meet certain green building standards at 50 North Greeley Avenue. So Tom, you, you and LDAD uh, met with uh, on this task force. And if you could you know, give us an update in terms of where we are. Uh, we have uh, Jennifer sent around on February 13th an updated version of the proposed legislation, uh, which I think we've all had a chance to look at. And um, uh, but what went on since then at, uh, at your task force meeting? Yeah, it was um, uh, myself and Eldad from the planning board and uh, Lisa Katz and um, Alex from the town board in addition to uh, town staff, Jennifer and Ed and um, Sabrina, and forgive me if I forget others, uh, I think Jill was there. And so it was a pretty good session. We went through the um, this version, the one you just cited, reference, which is the February 13th version, which we have in front of us tonight. Yep. In uh, the context of our formal comments, our memo, the, the plain words memo. Um, to uh, go through and see what uh, what should be done, could be done with uh, making revisions and refinements to the uh, draft text. And there were, obviously there were sort of areas of um, just minor adjustments that uh, will probably appear to everybody, be clear to everybody when the next version comes out, and, you know, we'll check the 13th, uh, this document you have with the new one that comes out for that. But uh, I'd rather focus on what I think are the, sort of the bigger things we talked about. And um, they come down to, in my memory, um, building height, uh, street wall, and uh, application process procedures for application approval. And um, <coughs> one of the things we talked about was the relationship between the zoning text process of uh, turning that into legislation and the actual design site plan application and how those two things uh, would come together. And it's, it's quite frankly, it's not clear to me yet exactly what that process will be. It, uh, maybe Jennifer or um, Sabrina can clarify that for us. Um, the initiative right now appears to be to advance the zoning text. And that's what uh, we focused on um, in that meeting. There were some elements of it that I think that in our memo, the planning board's memo we've been uncomfortable with, which was that we really sort of thought that this being a really fairly complicated um, site plan application in terms of its physical characteristics. I'll put the policy uh, subjects aside, just the physical characteristics of the proposal, that perhaps it would be best if playing board with our particular sort of experience and expertise to the sense to the extent that we have it, that perhaps we ought to be in the lead uh, doing that. And the town board made it uh, very clear that that wasn't going to happen. That they were going to they were going to hold the authority to do that. Um, their justifications were, I think, that um, as I remember, uh, that it was a very important project, and it was the the um, that this project was the um, manifestation of some very important town policies with respect to affordable housing and environmental 
uh, uh, environmental uh, objectives and uh, the redevelopment of, um, of North Greeley. And they, they, uh, then they are, obviously, I hope that I'm not misstating this, but they thought that that was of sufficient importance that it ought to be in their hands, and, that, and they felt that they would have the ability to, to uh, handle it in a way which would be appropriate to the task. So we left it there, and what was um, what we clarified was that as a as a special permit um, application, that the applicant and the process would follow the existing code for special permit, which is typically it goes through zoning first and then it comes by referral to the planning board and we did that for uh, Sunshine Homes I think we were in the process of doing that for the mosque I believe was another one um, I don't know quite how conifer worked but in any case um, that was the standard procedure now there are there is a provision in the code that there is a a, a um, a um, special consideration, I think, that if there, if the underlying zoning says that the planning board would have jurisdiction, the planning board would take the lead um, in the site plan review. In any event, the town board made the case that they can, the UC code allows them to, the planning, I'm sorry, the town board ha has the authority to modify that procedure if they think it's the best interest of the town. And so that's what applies uh, in this particular case that they would be taking the lead. It also says, however, that the they they assured me, and I'm sure certainly it's going to work out this way, that they will be meeting with us and referring this uh, to us in the pro as a, uh, a referral for site plan review, not in our as an authority that we would have, but as advisors to the process throughout the process. And so I, I'm, I'm happy to take them at their word of that, and I hope that we can be, you know, some service in that regard. I think that they look forward to it, and it seemed to me that that it would be um, everybody. I, I think believes that that would be the best way is to get everybody involved who has some, uh, you know, some um, some experience in doing this kind of thing. So uh, we left it we left it there on uh, the process side. In terms of design, the design stipulations, there were there was a stipulation that had to do with street wall specifications about 50 feet this, 75 feet that, this far away from the from the street wall, um, which um, we thought were really too restrictive in terms of what the site plan review process might be able to do in modifying those things. And that it was too specific with regard to the proposal, actual proposal was being given. In other words, the zoning text suggestion was that the zoning text was actually going to lock in the design proposal. And uh, we'll see it. I think I have this right. Everybody agreed that perhaps that level of specificity should come out of the zoning text in order for there to be greater flexibility in all of that. <clears throat> the third one, I think, is very interesting. It has to do with height. There was some discussion about 60 feet, which was in the it's, it's in the, uh, the, the February 13th version of this, the one we have in front of us, the latest one that they've put out for us. Uh, 60 feet as a maximum and four stories. And there was a discussion about whether how do we know 60 feet is the right number. And you know why 60 feet, and where did that come from? And the, the conclusion was that not to decide that now in this version, and to instead of have 60 feet in here as a absolute height, it, it, the absolute height would not be defined yet. It would essentially be brackets with a dashed line in it to be determined, and to be determined through further discussion, to be determined through. Uh, working out um, the details with the developer 
uh, to be determined through further analysis and decisions by the town board. And they, <coughs> they asked us, they asked the planning board now to take on that study, to come up with a recommendation for what the absolute height ought to be in the zoning text. And so the to be determined is to be determined by recommendation to the town board from the planning board. Town board deciding upon our recommendation and advice what they th what the town board thinks it ought to be. So we've been tasked to take this on and to decide what number ought to be to be the most appropriate absolute height should be in the zoning tax for this particular site. Interesting. Not good. It sounds like you did good work. <clears throat> well, we'll see. Depends on if we can actually uh, yeah. serve them in a way which is helpful. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, to me, uh, I, don't, I didn't see anything about really parking. You know, it's off street parking and loading. Um, yeah, sure. It should that that should be one of the concerns. Um, another one is, um, you know, that when I talked to the, the uh, fire chief, um, he said he is not sure about um, you know sixty feet in that. There are wires in the way, um, and there's apparently not enough space in the back of the building. As is, it, this is this is speculative to a certain extent because I don't have any drawings in front of me, and so you can't get the uh, the ladder around the back, and you can't put it in the front where it's close enough for the arching water to get on top, uh, unless you want to go and. Uh, Put all the cabling underground. So that would be one thing that would enter into the discussion, um, you know, because it's it's significant. Yeah. So at what point in the process, the town board or the planning department, whoever you know, gets their preliminary review, uh, would be something for them to probably yeah, consider on that. Yeah. yeah. And it's. Uh, I think it's interesting that <clears throat> I think the applicant had originally proposed underground wiring, and it was the, ten, the planning board that said, gee, that would be onerous, but it may not be onerous in view of some of these comments. So we actually, in our, one of our memos, we took that out and said, gee, we think that would be onerous on the owner to um, <clears throat> put the wires in the ground. So, but maybe we shouldn't. Well, but it affects, it. okay, but if we take that route, then, then uh, how do we prove that? That you can get the water on top of a, of a well, six foot I, building, yeah. so it's it's not both things, uh, and of course, you know, if you put the, the wires underground, you know, that allows the ladder truck to get up closer, but no parking would be allowed, you know, for the you know the length of the of the fire truck, so it's it's not guaranteed that that's what's going to happen, but I don't and I don't really know how we get proof because. It, uh, we need an expert uh, of some sort to help us on that one because it will make something change. So, um, since we have been asked to do this, you know, maybe that's one of the things that we look into is yeah. uh, approach fire department to ask them, you know, what do they think? And the impact if, of our. Yeah. If I may, I, I just want to remind the board that you have a draft memo that uh, was prepared and a referral that is expected of your board by I think this Friday. And what? if you guys need more time for that, um, separate and apart from the analysis that you've been tasked with, um, we should ask for more time. Well, Where is I, I would tell you, here's, you know, we send out, it's, it's, it's older, it's one from January 25. My, my thinking on, <clears throat> frankly, on the draft memo is uh, much of this is now, oh, our memo. Yeah. Oh, our memo. Much of this is now uh, moot, and, and I don't see some much. Some of it is, some of it isn't, and, and, and you know, I've identified which, where there have been changes in your letter, if that's helpful, if you want to go through that, or if you want to wait, 
Do you want me to circulate well, it? I don't know what the other members feelings are. My feeling is that um, what might be useful to the town board at this stage is if we had a site plan and if we were going to offer comments on a site plan that we don't have in front of us, these would be some of the issues that we would we would raise. No answers, no nothing, but just say these, uh, that would be useful, like, might be useful to the town board. Um, I don't know what this even means in terms of we've been tasked with determining whether 60 feet is the right height for what? There, that presumed, I, I, I guess, that it's going to be four floors. Okay, well, you know, what's the minimum? So it's, going to, it's, it's designed to be four floors, and then, you know, uh, what are the issues? Um, you know, if it's already ordained that it's going to be four floors, then there's no point studying and seeing what the marginal, marginal benefit of the fourth floor is in terms of and the cost of the marginal cost of that is. So that's, that's out. Um, so it's, I mean, I think we, we frankly should just send a, a list of bullets of things that uh, the town board ought to be concerned with or might want to be concerned with um, and, and, and leave it at that. But I, I personally went through the, the memo again, and, and you know, um, it just doesn't seem to be relevant at this point. So well, I, I, what I would say is the memo stands. Yeah, it, it is what it is back then. We, well, yeah. but, but I mean, it's still our recommendations. Well, it was, it was our recommendations before the latest change, so they've changed it since, this was January 25 when we sent it out, so yeah. that's our memo. Well, what have they changed? Well, they changed the entire process. I don't think they did. Um, All they did was it's no longer obligatory, right? From what I understand, it's no longer obligatory to have to refer it to us. Well, I think no. No, already... it is. It is re required. The referral is required. So the, if I could just interject for a second on the process, yeah, the process out, outlined in the proposed local law in the version that was circulated to you last week on the thirteenth, and that was discussed discussed at the working group meeting last week. The process is the same that exists in the current code with respect to special use permit applications. Mm -hmm. And that is that the zoning, I'm sorry, not the zoning, the town board would be the approval authority for the special use permit and the site, the associated site plan. And there is a required referral to the planning board for that application. Oh, no, the okay. only thing that's different is that there is an added step where the town board, and this is, you know, sort of, uh, surpluses surplusage language because the town board would have this authority anyway but there's inserted in there a provision that says the town board can invite the planning board to sit with it at a, at a meeting for the purposes of of discussing your referral instead of just sending a memo to them sit at the table with the town board with the applicant review the application and provide you know real-time comments on the application to the town board so Jennifer, um, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. I understand that when I said that, that yes, the underlying uh, code still applies, which means that they have to submit it to the planning board for our the uh, referral to us. But um, the and I think it's it's true. Maybe I'm wrong about this. That for the things that the planning board no normally uh, cares about, um, we would have some authority in, like drainage, for example. You would have advisory authority to the town board. Right. If there... so, uh, so I'm sorry. So yeah. uh, one of the questions would be: Well, is our advisory authority limited to those things? No. Your advisory authority is spans the entire application. Okay, so um, I had understood that that it had to come to us, but what had changed from uh, the previous draft to the to the February thirteenth draft was the previous draft said that they would it was obligatory for them to meet with us in this joint session. The language says that they that they would do that. They must do that, and they changed the, the language changed from that to it would be their option to do that. That's what I was referring to, and it's not to me. It's not a big deal. I mean, they're going to do what they're going to do either way. So I don't think there's really a point to. 
mean, I don't want to force try and force this on the town board because we wouldn't be successful trying to force it on the town board anyway. So, you know, they're going to do, as I said, what they want to do. I'm not saying it's, a, it's terrible, terrible, but I'm just trying to face facts here about what we can do, what we can't do, and uh, how we can help and how we're not being invited to help. Is another way to say it. So, um, and I'm sure that the, they're going to say, well, we are inviting you to help, and I take that in good faith that they are. Um, I disagree about about not being involved in the decision about how tall the building is because that there's a big difference between 60 feet and 45 feet. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that is a I mean there's a big difference. Um, and I think that it would be behoove us as a planning board to take that on to try and understand that from our perspective and then be able to present what our findings are to the town board and to the architectural review board whoever else is involved zoning board just put it out there this is why what we think and why and there is an architectural treatment of this building which has driven the height limit it's actually not 60 feet in here but it, it was clarified by the applicant that it's that the actual uh, uh, height is the absolute height is like 55 feet, I think. Um, and 60 feet, somebody just put 60 feet in here to give somebody a little bit extra room. Uh, but 55 feet is still, it's, it's tall. And there's something about the architectural expression of this building that drives it there. It's not a matter of necessity, development necessity. It's a matter of, and I think what we ought to care about, first of all, is what is the development necessity here? And the town believes it's four stories in order to get the density they want down there. Um, I think that they say that they'd like to be able to get some retail on the ground floor. They made that pretty clear. So given that as sort of the basic development envelope, what is the biggest concern, the biggest, one of the very big concerns people have had through this whole process of form-based code and, and, the, um, and the reaction to that was and Eldad said this very well. He, he said it was people were objecting to density, and density in, in that case was talking about the amount of development, right? But they were also, I think, talking about the heights of buildings and the feeling that, that, that things were too big, that they had lost the character of the town because the buildings were too tall. And in the proposal as drawn up in all the documents that showed us what this would be. So, uh, it seems to me that there is an obligation to respond to that concern. And we are being asked to help them respond to that concern by looking at this. I guess they felt that we had some experience in doing this. And I, I think that we probably do. And I'd like to, I'd like to promote this involvement if I can. The question for me is how, if we decide to do it, how do we go about it? What, what would we do? in order to get that answer. I mean, there are a number of things we could do in the simple ones of blue and test. It might not be, you know, that's not going to be the definitive answer, but it seems to me there are a number of things we can do to get our arms around this thing and to use those devices to present to, present to, the, well, to the town board. Yeah, and I think we have to be more specific than um, in, in this. Maybe it's a list of things. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's sort of like... Uh, I have several coming. I gave you one already. Another one is that <clears throat> that um, you have a statement here that shouldn't have the charging stations. Uh, certainly shouldn't have them inside. And who's going to use them? Who's going to be able to afford a car to use it in this thing? This the people that are coming in here are either elderly or or young or whatever, and they don't have the money. But you know, because right now. You know, the, uh, uh, those kind of cars are expensive. And so oof, why would you encourage that as opposed to leave room for it maybe in the future? But, you know, that's, that's one that, you know, that uh, bothers me from the danger. Uh, and bicycles, you, you say no bicycles. Don't, don't deal with it, uh, I think. Uh, but we don't want scooters that are... are um, you know, run by lithium batteries because now in the first three, in the first two months in, in Manhattan, only one person has died from that, but 15 have been injured. Uh, there have been 15 fires in essence. You know, so uh, 
that makes me uncomfortable. And you've, you've lit, you put a light on it to say, why are we dealing with this in essence? And I, I don't, I think it's stronger than that, but that's what we should do. I mean, you've, you've got a whole basis here for things to, you know, to, um, to work with, but I don't know the time frame is, is not that. Well, I, I think the issues <clears throat> on, on height specifically, I think some of the questions that you asked of the fire chiefs and, you know, um, to weigh in is, is, is like, is the first fundamental question that should be asked. Yeah. How do you react? But to be clear, he's, this is his I understand. opinion. I understand. So it's no not proof. final. So, but the, no that, that's someone I think who should be, those folks should be uh, uh, talked to. And I think mm -hmm. that would be something that I would recommend to the town board that they, they listen to and find out if there's, mm -hmm. if there's a problem. Now, I, I, Tom's on tonight, and it, I guess the average height of this is not 60 feet. It's substantially less than that. And I, I don't, when it comes to the subjective height and that sort of thing, it, it's not my uh, strong point. Uh, it is for you guys to do architecture, et cetera. Yeah. But what is my strong point is to know about safety. And if I hear something from a fire department, as we did with Chappaqua Crossing, that I, we can't go any higher than three stories, and we don't have the equipment, and then I hear Dick said, well, we have this issue of wires and access in the rear. These are concerns. Are they insurmountable? Probably not. Oh, money will solve it. Yeah, exactly. But uh, it's something that I think is part of the, um, the equation in terms of height on just that issue. Uh, I, I, I can't speak to, you know, what treatments look like, and I think that's very subjective. I think that's really more in the, in the realm of the ARB. Um, but issues that deal with uh, the roof type, uh, it's my understanding in talking with uh, fire underwriters that, um, you know, there's concern with uh, some solar roofs, there are concerns with uh, these grass roofs, uh, these, these green roofs, uh, in terms of uh, venting and, and access, etc. So these are concerns, and uh, if it's not insurmountable, that's fine, but uh, I think to blindly go ahead and just say, is going to be 50 feet or 60 feet without having the input of our emergency services folks is nuts. Well, that's okay, but we can, yeah, yeah. Yep. If, they, if, they, if they ask us to do, they have asked us to yeah. do Yeah, so I think that's something that should be done. You're exactly right, and you're exactly right. And so, you know, we, that would be the entree, you know, that it's a, it's a, a three-phase thing. You can, you can, you can't win on all three, but you can win on two. So the, the, I, th I think you're right, Bob. I mean, it is subjective. Yes, absolutely. How high is up, right? right exactly. And the only way to do, I, in my opinion, my experience, the only way to really be able to define it is to define it in the context of where it's going to go. I, I, I agree. Uh, and the, I, I just don't do it well. You, you do it well. You're trained in it. So, so I, I defer to you. Uh, the guys really know this stuff. So I, I absolutely agree. So the con and, and in order to demonstrate that context, right, you could do a balloon test, which is fine, um, which I think maybe is the right thing to do. I know we'll figure this out. Uh, another thing you could do, and this is what we used to do. We don't do it anymore. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not practicing architecture anymore, but I suspect they're not doing it anymore because they never see it. We never see it here. Um, is to build a model, a physical model. Mm -hmm. They uh, right now we don't. They don't do that anymore because you have all these, uh, you know, these uh, uh, technology yep. doing these uh, sketch up. Yep. Yeah. Three Ds. It's a great tool. We, see, we saw it a couple times tonight. Yep. It's a great tool, but. It, it doesn't get you into the three-dimensional, actual three-dimensional environment that the proposal is. There's something, and you, you might know this is sort of your engineering background, there's a, there's a basic principle, is that drawings lie. They don't lie on purpose, <laughs> but they don't tell the truth because they can only represent so much. And a, a, even these computer drawings, uh, three-dimensional computer drawings, don't tell you what it don't tell you the actual truth because they are a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional thing and so i wonder if perhaps we ought to be asking the applicant or and the town board require the applicant based on our recommendation to actually build a physical model figure out you know how big it ought to be but it ought to be in the context of uh, the street we used to do these things all the time 
you know, what are the size of the houses across the street? You know, what, what is, what's the scale of the buildings uh, going down mm. to the corner? Uh, Susan Lawrence and the other buildings that are there. Putting it in that context, I think, will make it more evident what the proposal is and I think give us a better tool to really understand right. what feels good within the context of what four stories requires, right. really requires. I, th I think actually, Tom, have you done some of that work? You were, were you tasked with doing some of that work in terms of the other roof heights uh, on, on North Greeley? Maybe good evening, Mr. Chairman. Sort of, uh, context a little bit anyway. Yes, good evening, Mr. Chairman, member of the, of the board. I, let's take a walk down memory lane. We had Conifer. Uh, they have a maximum ridge height of 51 feet with an average roof height of 46 feet, 10 inches. We have 91 Bedford with a average building height of 34 feet, 0.8 in height, their maximum ridge height is 40 feet. And then we have uh, one South Greeley, which has an average of about 32 feet in height. And then they're in their respective zones, 91 Bedford in the BR zone, Conifer in the industrial zone. That's excellent data. That's really good work. Thank you. That, that's you're, helpful. You're because welcome. That, I'm sorry, go ahead, Tom. Uh, in regards to the fire access, you know, we've had some discussions with the fire chief as well, the building department and the fire marshal. The town currently has a 60 foot ladder truck. That's maximum reach, but the angle of inclination is not going to let it get that far of a reach or that high. That's just the length of the ladder. We will be relying on mutual aid from Mount Kisco with a longer ladder truck, I believe theirs is a hundred foot. To yes, theirs is a hundred and ours is 70, just 70. for the numbers. Okay, thank you. So we are already at a, you know, a loss being the first responder in town. The wires are a game changer. They will prohibit any access through the front. The building being at the property line against the MTA would probably require a deluge system similar to conifer to uh, douse the whole back of the building with water at the time of a problem. And there's very limited access to the south and north to access this building. So it's going to be something the fire department and the chiefs do want to speak on. There is an a parking garage underneath that they're very concerned with, with a one entrance in and out, that if a, an EV car goes up, they may not be able to deal with this to put copious amounts of water on. So there's a lot of obstacles that it behooves the town to, like you said, have the, the fire chief's comment. Um. Let me just ask uh, this question. I'm not so sure it would help, but um, and maybe this is something we should ask the fire chiefs. Does it make a significant difference with all those issues and constraints and, and problems if it's a three story building versus a four story building? And of course, I'm using stories, which again, I shouldn't be saying I should be saying height. So as opposed to 60 feet or 55 feet, if it's a 45 foot building, does that remedy some of these issues? Uh, and I don't know if you know, Tom, but I, I think that's that's the kind of questioning I think we should we should be asking uh, our emergency services folks. Uh, yes, sir, I, I do agree. And if we look at Conifer, which has a similar height, they're at forty six feet ten inches to their their average roof height. They have three sides available for firefighting: the Sawmill Parkway, Greeley and down at Hunt's Plate. It's still limited and it's a type of structure that's rated to withstand fire to the best of its nature. It's, you know, it's got a very good fire rating. So we're gonna be relying heavily on the fire capabilities of the building and less on the ability of the firefighters to get access to the building, to get our residents out of there in my opinion. Right. And we've heard about 
uh, we had a presentation, I believe, from the applicant in terms of the <clears throat> fire rating. But one of the things that struck me was in the way that this construction would take place, I was concerned with the issue of how smoke travels and upwards in one of these kinds of buildings. It, it seems to be almost that you are creating uh, flues, chimneys, if you will, chimney effects. And so it may not burn, but uh, the smoke may be a, a real issue as well. Uh, you had said earlier the problem of venting a green roof. That is a real problem because you'd have to shovel away before you could cut through. And if the roof structure is a cross laminated timber structure like the building is made of, you're looking at five inches of solid wood at a minimum to get through. So it's going to delay venting. You know, there are methods of allowing mechanical venting and dampers to open doors that may need to be incorporated into the, to the design to do this. The elevator shafts could become areas of refuge to egress you know, people down to a safe public way, but that has to be addressed. We've yet to see a design. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Hal. You're very welcome. Yep. Really, really good information. Thank you. I mean, there are, uh, for example, the kinds of things, the bullet pointed memo that I think is an excellent idea. Yep. Um, one of them I, I'm concerned about is, I mean, green roofs are great, right? But green roofs need to be taken care of. And the uh, developer made a statement when he was here that this building's going to last for 150 years. Well, that's a bit of hyperbole because this is actually new building technology. We don't know how long right, these, right. these things are going to last. Despite the warranty. <laughs> yeah, despite the warranty. <laughs> uh, but that's definitely true of a green roof. Is somebody going to maintain a green roof for 150 years? There's no guarantee of that. And so the consequence of that would be what kind of roof do you get in replacement? Is it like a... a asphalt shingle roof do we want to see an asphalt shingle roof on that building on the or do we, it, would it be a standing seam metal roof there needs to be a, 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 a better i think understanding of the long-term consequences of some of these things before somebody says well it's going to be a green roof and you're going to see it. it's going to be beautiful i mean that's taking an awful lot on faith for example mm -hmm. And that's just one of the things that I think could go into this memo. That yep. I had, I'm sure we all have a few. Yeah, I think, I, I personally, I think uh, because of the changes that have gone on, I'm, I'm sure there's some, there are nuggets in here that are still relevant. One of which we, we, I think we should change, which is the underground wiring based on some of the information we may have. Um, but it seems to me that that would be more useful to the town board at this point. Those, they have this memo, they've seen this memo. Yeah. We talked about it, it and I think we've gone past that, frankly. Yeah, me too. Um, so I think this is this is old, old uh, terrain that we've we've tilled, and I think we should move on with based on the assignments that we have and what we would suggest to the town board, and that might be uh, issues and questions that they could consider. I agree, and so what maybe, and I, we need to get Eldad involved in this, yes. obviously. And Kanan, sure. And yeah. Kanan. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. What I'd like to do is put together what I think might be the right way to get at this height issue, the kinds of things we could look at. Tom's uh, data is excellent starting point for that. You can go look at that building in town and know that that's 51 feet. Yep. Get a sense of context. Of real that context. Yeah. Should be a change that's put in the doc. You know the document in the end in the end right and that's the objective is to get a height limit in legislation which is one which is the right one mm -hmm. because all zoning the zoning has stories and height mm -hmm. in every case so that's what we yeah. need to and one of the other things that kind of worries me is that okay if you have a 51 foot height um building well let me see now that's uh, 12 times that that's that's at least four stories in, in a conventional building. And so um, we have to, you know, think about, well, is that okay? How, how do we really control this? I don't, I'm not a lawyer, um, you know, as to, well, okay, if you say this is going to happen, it's going to happen. My sense is that, that, um, you know, with zoning, 
uh, the town has a lot of prerogatives to do in the future. They could change it and you know, say, hey, we want a wall of these things type of thing. Yeah. Well, uh, Sabrina, to, uh, to answer one of your questions, do we need extra time? I, I guess I guess we do, just to put together <clears throat> whatever it is that we want to put together to get to the town board. Again, I'm, I, I don't think we should take a whole lot of time on this. I would like to get it to them sooner than later. I, I don't want to be the, the reason for any uh, undue delays. But it seems to me that <clears throat> what we should really do is, uh, the five of us, put together our thoughts and get some bullets out to the town board and say, these are these are issues that you know as you as you move forward on the legislation, be cognizant of these. Now, it's the town board's prerogative, and it's and I have no problem with the even the change in what I perceive was a change in the process and change from what uh, Eldad was arguing for, for example. That's fine, uh, but uh, you know whatever the process is, the process is, and the town board will will uh, handle the you know all aspects of it. That's fine, but. Here are the things that that we've done in the past, and these these might be helpful to you. And I think that's that. I think that I truly think that's the best thing that we can do to really help the town board as they navigate this uh, this legislation and then the application. Now it's a little difficult to do all the bullets because we haven't seen a site plan, so it's we have we have. I mean, there's plans online, so we can I guess look at that. But we have I guess. Some, some, so well, that was going to be the next thing. I mean, if we're gonna, if, if it seems to me, if we're gonna come up with a a planning board recommendation for how tall this building ought to be. You know, I, I, I don't think that we ought to be just picking things out of the air. I, I agree, especially me. Maybe you can, but I can't, I'll tell you that. Um, I mean, in, in fairness, what, you know, one, one thing you do would just say, well, okay, you know, 45 feet, done. But that's not, give me the problem, um, really the kind of attention that it really requires right. and in order to give it the attention it requires I think that it's not we're not going to come up with an answer you know next week mm -hmm. it's going to take some time and some work and some and some patience on the town board's part I think they are going to have to go through I, I I'm not a process person here with regard to legislation but it seems to me they're going to have to go through public hearings they're going to meet they're going to have I think they're going to go through public hearings on the zoning legislation I'm not sure they actually have to but they are, uh, but they're going to hear from the public on this, and there's going to be some rounds of, you know, uh, I, I guess review and and uh, uh, revision. Uh, no matter whether we're involved or not, they're probably going to be going through that, which gives us time, I think, to backfill this one important question. Well, and can I just? Oh, yes, please. What, what, when you when you're done, Tom, I just want to interject no, one no, thing. No, no, I'm just going to say that. That if we could just quickly come up with what we think the right tools are and process and and you know some sort of a schedule to, to to get at this thing as quickly as possible, that maybe there's some oxygen in the process already. Uh, the town board is going to have to go through for us to be uh, able to contribute. That's all I was going to say. Yeah. So the town board absolutely is required to hold a public hearing on the legislation. Um, in order for the town board to do that, though, I believe they will need to fill in that gap. So they can't advertise for the public hearing with a piece of legislation that doesn't have a height proposed. So that piece of information will need to get to the town board before they can schedule their public hearing. The other thing I just want to remind the board is that there is a secret process involved for the legislation as well. So whatever figure the, the planning board recommends to the town board for the height. Um, you know, if that's going to be plugged right into the legislation, that's going to undergo a secret review. So there'll be a number of studies that'll have to be done, um, you know, through the applicant and the town board to make sure that at that height, at a conceptual, you know, on a conceptual basis, it's not going to cause any significant adverse environmental. So it, and that that's helpful. So uh, two things. First of all. Uh, got it with respect to the official sort of public hearing on the zoning text, but they can hold, can they not hold informal meetings on a draft zoning text in informal public meetings and put it before the public that way? They can, that that would be up to the town board. It, it would not be the usual process, um, but, but they could do that. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I imagine it's not the usual process, but this is not the this is a pretty unusual proposal with respect to its impacts and so on. The other thing is that um, through the 
through the CEQA review, whatever is in the zoning text gets, re gets analyzed that <clears throat> way. And the outcome of that mitigation outcome of that might be, well, it's too tall. We need to revise the height. That would be another way to get at a planning board's review of the height without slowing up the process, you think? Yeah, I, th I think that that could work. Yeah. Okay, um, I just want to clarify one thing. Um, it, it, in a way, it almost sounded like that uh, we shouldn't talk with the, the fire chief. Um, you know, is there, is that a problem? Well, that will be part of the formal secret process. So emergency <laughs> services will have to be consulted as part of that secret process uh, right. for the legislation. So there will be uh, formal comment solicited um, and hopefully formal comment submitted to the town board from emergency services, including the fire chief. So whether the, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tom. So um, that's where this sort of process gets a little bit crazy to me because if the, if the, um, if the fire department is looking at only the zoning text, they have nothing to look at, right? They need a, a design to look at in order to assess, like Tom DePole needs a design to look at in order to assess, you know, whether it, it, it you know, meets the, the expectations requirements of the town. So that review, that doesn't come. Does that come in the seeker process? Are drawings submitted? Are the, is the site plan submitted as part of the seeker uh, uh, review? Because the seeker review is for the zoning text only, isn't it? How does this work? It is, but you have somewhat of a specific proposal, um, and this is where this is where it gets a little confusing, right? And why the initial recommendation last year to the applicant was to proceed simultaneously with the zoning text and an application for a special use permit, because when you do one before the other, sometimes it, the the process does get a little bit confusing, <laughs> admittedly. Yeah, people get um, so, so we're just looking at the legislation now, but we do know that the legislation is targeted for a particular development, right? And we have um, at least preliminary plans for that development. It's not a site plan, but we have some, you know, architectural renderings and, and, and whatnot for that development. So we would be able to use those as a conceptual, um, at a conceptual level to, to study the height. Okay, That's great. not to say that, that those plans are exactly what would ultimately be approved if anything's approved, right? Because it has to go through the process right. and there, there likely will be changes to those plans as the application itself goes through the process. So um, in that case, um, I think that this board needs to get whatever drawings are available have been submitted to the town, site plan, architecture, whatever's available. That, ha that the applicant has done, we need to get those so that we can, I think we should have those so that we can really understand what we're looking at, what we're being asked to look at with respect to height. We don't have anything. Yeah, they're all posted online. So everything that's been submitted to the town board is all posted online under the NG 50, I forget what it's called, 50 so North Greeley so the, so um, the tab on the website. Okay, so the town has it, obviously. Yes. So the town ought to give it to the planning board. I mean, why should I have to go online and take these the, and, you know, go to to, um, to Kinko's and get drawings printed out? If this is a formal thing we're being asked to do, I think that we should get a, a set of drawings. We each ought to have a set of drawings to look at this thing. Otherwise, you know, it just seems like we don't have the material that we're, to say the material is available doesn't get us there. I think it needs to be given to us. And you're talking about in hard copy? Yeah, yeah, please. It'd be great. I mean, it can't be a big deal. I don't think that there are that many. Yeah, I'd, I'd like time. to see them too. I mean, it's uh, it, if the height is fifty-one, why were why is this number sixty? It's not fifty-one. <clears throat> fifty-one, I thought was. I thought fifty-one was. It's conifer. Uh, conifer. Conifer. Oh, okay. This one is fifty-five. I think. Fifty-five. Yeah, All right. Height, I think. Anyway. Okay, we still need to, to, need see, to see it, it. because right. what, do you, what else are they going to put up there? If they don't put up a rain garden, 
you know, are they going to put up, uh, uh, you know, solar panels? Uh, you know, somehow we let one in downtown get by, you know, when there, does that make, that's the ugliest roof I've had, you know, I've seen in the whole town. <clears throat> yeah, but it, <clears throat> you know, it's, I want to know what, you know, I want to see what other things are planned for it, just not the raw building. <clears throat> Well, I think not just for the sake of height, but I think also um, for um, what Bob is suggesting, here are the bullet point things that we think you guys ought to be looking at. And we don't, I mean, I get into it what some of those might be, mm -hmm. but not really informed by actually looking at Senator Arnold. Right, right. I agree. Um, <clears throat> So I, I think it would be very useful. I, I think, I mean, I think you raised the point where you, if you gave this to the fire department without plans, what are you looking at? Uh, and they probably look at you with the, the four heads. They have to see what is it. So I, you know, and again, marking it up, looking at it, writing on it. Um, I don't know what, what's involved. How many uh, sheets are there? Uh, any idea what the, I would the defer schematics them. might be? I'd guess. Oh, look. Tom has them. He'll tell you what they are. I'm, I'm counting. I'm counting. Maybe 10. Yeah. There's an architectural set, and then there's some um, preliminary engineering site plan. Uh, I've got five pages with me here that shows the, the elevations and some floor plans, site oh, plans. Okay. Great. I mean, that's not that, not that much of a burden, then, if we can get those, that would be great. You Have just you want those plans? Pardon? Everyone's breaking up. Uh, something's happening, happening to our, our, our audio. Everyone's very scratchy up there. The information we have has, has engineering plans and architectural plans. Okay. They're concept plans. If you, you, we need to make a request of the applicant to provide additional hard copy plans because we did not get enough for the planning board because everything has been distributed digitally. Mm -hmm. So if you want just the architectural plans, that's different than asking for the entire package of plans. What more is in the uh, package? Would it be, is, is it relevant to us? A site plan? Where's it's the not, site plan? It, I don't think they've done one yet. Very vague, Sabrina. I looked at, I looked at that stuff. Yeah, it's very, not a lot of detail. Very conceptual. I mean, it's a site plan yeah. nonetheless, but there's not a heck of a lot of information on it. I, yeah, I don't know that that would be bring you much value. Uh, I think that the architecturals would probably be better. Well, wait, wait, wait a minute. I, when you say a site plan wouldn't be of much value, uh, what I'm thinking about as a site plan that, that would be useful would be essentially the ground floor plan of the project. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about that's the in the architecturals. We have okay. that. That's what I thought, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, I wanted to see the layout of the building. Yeah, that's there. Yeah. yeah, so okay. that's, I mean, that's it can be subject to change, but I heard from somebody that that um, you know that's very narrow behind the uh, building. There's hardly any space. So um, <clears throat> yeah, I guess you have to ask ask the applicant. I would be helpful if you gave them a quick turnaround time because everybody's under the gun here. I guess I don't understand if it's only like five sheets and there are five of us, it's 25 sheets. You guys have been planning for the development department in the interest of doing town business, can't just print them and give them to us. I don't understand these protocols, it don't make sense to me. I mean, but you do what you have to do, but I really think it ought to come as quickly as possible because we've been asked to do this. Yep, yep. I mean, five sheets. I'm, Times five is like nothing. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Okay. So if we could do that, it'll be. I think it would be very helpful. I think it's it's uh, it's important. Um, I th I think some of us have asked for it before, but uh, I think I think it would just. Again, I I just think we understand we don't have a formal site plan, but uh, there are some uh, essential, fundamental basics that we have to have in front of us. I think to to make any kind of reason. Um, Give any recent help to the town board? Yeah, we should have had it with, yeah. with, the, with the text from day one. I think so. Yeah. So, can we make a, a, a commitment to each other to move on this? Like, I, I'm happy to sit down and try and figure out with LDAB, we'll do this together. 
what the right sort of process would be in materials to get at the height limit thing and have something for next week or next or next meeting sure next meeting yeah. next meeting what, sure. what about our bullet point thing uh we can <clears throat> i think once we get the the drawings i think all of us can can put together our the bullets very quickly great great you know i don't know 10 15 bullets at most each yeah i don't you know if that i would use an right, and i'm sure there's gonna be tremendous overlap old army technique Anything you want to be read, leave it on the, the first page. Don't bother with the second and third. Right, right. I know. Okay. So anyway, uh, when do we think we can get the? Uh, uh, can we pick those up at town town hall? Uh, the extra copies. Yeah. Um, you know, as a packet that we can just pick up in the next couple of days. Hello. Oh, I'll, leave, I'll leave it to you guys. I mean, Sorry. Just, oh. <laughs> Sorry. Just, 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll, I'll have to see if we, one if we can print them ourselves or how quickly we can get them from the applicant. Okay, great. Uh, so, I mean, I need, I need, I need it. Yeah. I, I will put it as the priority for me to get to figure this out and get them for you. Okay, great. Thank you. We're probably at the about the end of where we can actually understand any of what you guys are saying. The, yeah, well, you it's it's are become really... so distorted, it's incredible. Yeah. Well, I, I losing... think it's interesting. It's like learning a new language. Yeah, yeah well, you're great. <laughs> we're losing you the audio. have a lips move. Yeah. That helps. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, is there a motion then to close the meeting? <clears throat> Please. Second. Okay. <laughs> Please hold it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you, you for your help. You're very welcome.